Welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to wrap up our section on harvest models uh, by introducing the idea of, of economic variables explicitly into how we model harvest using a classic uh, <clears throat> mixed uh, population economic model called the Gordon Schaefer model uh, as kind of a, an example of how we do this. Obviously, one could have many elaborations on this theme, but this is a basic example of how we add economic variables specifically to our fixed effort uh, harvest model. So things we're going to add. First is we're going to add some market price uh, for the uh, resource that we're harvesting. So if we're using the example of the, the Massachusetts cod fishery, then this would be uh, the price of cod uh, per unit, say per ton um, or per pound, whatever value you want to assign it. But it's, you know, you're going to harvest some amount of cod and this is the market price uh, for that cod. Uh, we're also going to assign a cost to that effort we put into harvesting. So this is unit cost per unit effort. So we're going to end up now, instead of modeling effort as the proportion of the harvest that we are going to take, we're going to model effort in terms of some sort of economic terms, uh, you know, man hours, uh, number of boats that we need to operate, you know, the cost of that gear, all, all those kind of costs associated with uh, actually running uh, the harvest. There's going to assume that they scale with the amount of effort you put in. If you want to, if you want to harvest more, you need more man hours. If you want to harvest more, you need more boats. Um, so the, there's some unit cost to that effort. And that's going to be particularly flexible if it's if it's uh, human uh, man hours. It's going to be less flexible in terms of uh, scaling the capital. And you could you could obviously derive more advanced versions of this where you separate out uh, the capital cost from the um, from purely the um, the human labor costs, the human capital costs. Okay, and so once we've added those two uh, additional bits to the model, we can have uh, now this calculation of profit <clears throat> and profit being, as always, the total revenue uh, minus the total cost. So that's just the, the net between your revenue and your costs. And then specifically, our total revenue is going to be the market price of the resource times the amount that we harvest. Um, and then our total costs is are going to be our total amount uh, of effort we put in times the cost per unit effort. And, and should also note that in these terms, all of our other costs are assumed to scale with um, that effort. And so it's not just the effort of fishing, but it's going to also be the effort of shipping and the effort of uh, marketing and, and selling and all of those things that they scale uh, with the amount of effort that you put in. Um, so obviously there's ways to make this more realistic, but in terms of, you know, decisions about uh, how to actually, uh, how much effort to put into harvesting, uh, we, it's still, I think, a, a reasonable first assumption a first approximation to say that uh, as uh, as we put more effort into actual harvesting, um, the costs are going to scale with that to give us our total costs. Okay. So now we need to modify our harvest function because previously our harvest function was just expressed effort in terms of uh, proportion of the population harvested. And now we're going to need to redefine that in this context to saying that the harvest is still proportional to the size of the population, but now we're going to take uh, that and split it into two terms, our economic uh, measure of effort, and then this alpha, uh, which is essentially something, a parameter that tells us about the efficiency of that human activity. And so if we're measuring uh, effort in terms of, of number of boats, you know, this is going to be the efficiency of those boats that, you know, 
capturing fish. So if, if, if it's number of boats, then how many alpha would tell us how many fish or how many tons of fish uh, one boat can capture in, in one season at the current pop at, you know, as that varies with population density. If it's, you know, man hours, uh, it's again, how, how efficient uh, the system that's been put in place translates that, that you know, uh, human effort into uh, fish that are caught. So this is sometimes called our catchability coefficient. And that's probably obviously the hardest thing to nail down in this is, is how that, how, how efficient the thing is because the system is, because that's going to vary clearly, clearly going to vary uh, as the technology changes and it's not a, a, just a simple calculation. Um, cool. But to move on, let's dive deeper in. So let's think about how this uh, acts at the population level. So at the population level, uh, we have this equilibrium where harvest equals growth. And so harvest equal, now equals alpha, our, our efficiency of harvest times the effort we put in times the size of the population. So that tells us our harvest. Harvest equals growth, or growth is our delta N, which is given in this case, we're still assuming a logistic growth curve. Obviously, if you had a different growth curve, you could substitute it in there. Um, and so now we can solve this equation in terms of n uh, as a function of effort. So for if we want to know what the n is, the equilibrium population, as a function of the amount of effort we put in. And then more specifically, we can then plug this equilibrium back into this harvest equation to get us what's called an effort yield curve. So if we substitute this n in here, we now get a function of the amount that we can harvest sustainably as a function of the amount of effort we put in. And specifically, if you plug this in here, you're going to see that you're going to end up with um, an alpha E times K and an alpha E K minus alpha R E. And that's going to mean that we're going to have an E term and an E squared term. And that this effort yield curve is going to be a parabola. Cool. So let's look at this graphically. So on the right hand side here, we have an effort yield curve. And like I said, it's going to be a parabola. Uh, and it's important to understand that the shape of this parabola mirrors the sustainable yield curve. So, so if this is our growth curve here. Uh, when we put zero effort in, uh, we are at our carrying capacity because there's no harvest. So if we put zero effort in, this red, this pink line drops to zero. Uh, there's no harvest, uh, and we're at our carrying capacity. So this point. Zero, 0, here corresponds to k here. Now, as we increase our effort, we increase the slope of our effort curve. Uh, and as we increase this, we're increasing where we are in the effort yield curve, now moving in the other direction. And so specifically, for this particular uh, fixed effort line corresponds to this equivalent point on the effort harvest or the effort yield curve. And so this is, you know, for a given choice of alpha or the efficiency, this amount of effort, whatever these units are, you know, this might be about 0.8 corresponds to this equilibrium right there. So it's also important to remember that the effort yield curve describes uh, not how many fish you will harvest for a given unit of effort. It describes where that equilibrium will be. Um, so it describes the sustainable yield that corresponds uh, to that amount of effort. Because you can imagine if you start out at uh, 2,000 and you put that amount of effort in 
uh, you'd actually be harvesting up here and not over here. But this is the, the equilibrium point that would result. And that's important to remember because uh, there are some, there, there are potentially transients in these systems that are uh, important to think about. But anyway, each point on the, um, each point on the effort yield curve corresponds to a, a point on the sustainable har harvest curve uh, that comes with applying a particular level of effort. So as we kind of move uh, effort up, we move kind of counterclockwise on the growth curve as this slope of this line goes up. And then we move kind of clockwise around uh, the effort yield curve. And you're gonna see that the harvest is maximized at this intermediate level of effort, which was gonna to correspond to the maximum sustainable yield. Okay, so we have uh, tr now begun our translation of population dynamics into something more economic. How our how much should we, you know, what our, sus our sustainable harvest is is a function of the amount of effort we put in economically. So let's now translate this in a, a third set of figures uh, into overall. Uh, uh, profit, so, uh, revenue and costs. So this is our, our graph uh, that shows how our total revenues and total costs on the y-axis change as the amount of effort we put into harvesting. Uh, so obviously both curves are at zero if you put zero effort in. Now, first the total revenue curve follows the same parabola as the effort uh, harvest curve because we get the total revenue curve by taking that effort harvest curve and multiplying the harvest by the profit. So this, this total revenue curve is just the effort yield curve times the profit. Because you know, if we have a, put in a certain amount of effort, we get a certain amount of harvest, and then we multiply that again by profit to get this curve. Uh, now the, the total cost curve is, is quite simple because it, we're assuming that the costs scale linearly with the effort. And so this is just a, a straight line whose slope is determined by the cost per unit effort. So we increase the effort, the cost, costs go up uh, according to that cost per unit effort. Now, should be noted, economists are not looking for stable equilibrium. So this point here, is not where you're trying to go if you're an economist because that corresponds to total costs equaling total revenue and no one makes any money. Um, what economists want to maximize is not uh, you know, a point where these two equal, but we want to maximize profit. So profit here is the difference between the total revenue curve and the total cost curve. Obviously, no economist wants to be above that point because then your costs are greater than your revenues and you're gonna go out of business. Uh, but they don't necessarily wanna be at that point. They definitely don't wanna be this zero point either. They wanna go at some point in the middle that maximizes the profit. So if you're an economist trying to maximize profit, you want to know the difference between these two curves and you particularly want to um, maximize that. So in practice, you would, try to figure out how to maximize that. And then the level of effort is chosen based on what maximizes profit. Furthermore, uh, how do we find that? I mean, ultimately you would want to, I mean, what you can do is say, you know, how does profit change with effort? So, and you want to maximize that. So that's just D profit, D effort. You take the derivative of this. Um, and solve for it with respect to effort. The other way of thinking about this is that that point is gonna occur when the uh, total revenue cost is tangent to the total cost curve. So here I've, this blue line that I've drawn up here, this light blue line is just a line of the same slope as the total revenue curve, just move to the point where it's tangent. And you can see that if you're below that, uh, and you increase effort, your profits keep going up. And so there's an incentive to increase effort because you increase effort, your profits go up. Uh, 
beyond this point where you were tangent, your, your total costs go up linearly, your total revenues start to go down per unit effort. And so there's a, a yeah, your, your marginal, so beyond that point, your marginal costs go up faster than your marginal revenues. Yeah, so that, that point, that tangent point, and you can see an important uh, property of the Gordon Schaefer model, which is this point here that maximizes profit, that, which is often called the maximum economic yield, is lower than the peak. And so it's lower than the maximum sustainable yield. So um, interestingly, if you are managing a fishery sustainably and you have uh, things in place to, to do that, uh, that the, the effort you put in will result in a population uh, who actually stays um, at a higher population level than the maximum sustainable yield. So the maximum sustainable yield is not, not actually the most profitable, profitable thing to do. The most profitable thing to do is actually to underfish or under harvest relative to that maximum sustainable yield, which is also has that benefit of uh, lowering risk. Now you could redo all of this uh, again, accounting for the uncertainties in all of these that um, there's uncertainty in the population, there's uncertainty in our calculations of, of the economic efficiency. Uh, and then there's also going to be uncertainty in the market about um, the prices and then the costs, the, you know, the labor costs. So there's uncertainties in all of these things. Uh, so what you do in any particular situation is uh, you know, not always obvious. And it also depends on your level of risk because once we make these things probabilistic, those confidence intervals are not about um, about hypotheses testings. They're about essentially the level of risk you're willing to uh, entertain. Okay, so to review, Gordon Schaefer model overall gives us three curves and we need to be able to think about these three curves simultaneously to be able to understand what the model's doing. Uh, so we have our, our growth curve, our effort yield curve, and our revenues and costs curve. Our profit is determined by our total revenues, uh, which scale with our effort yield curve, and our total costs, which scale linearly with the amount of effort. The level of effort is chosen based on the profit, uh, and that, that determines the harvest, and that determines uh, the equilibrium of the population. So it's, you know, the ultimate decision making is, is trickling backward uh, from right to left, from the economic choices, determining uh, the effort, determining the harvest, determining the equilibrium. So what I want to do next is to, to think through uh, how each of these five parameters in the Gordon Schaefer model um, affect um, the choices that get made. So we have the parameters for, for price, costs, growth rate, carrying capacity, and efficiency. So in this case, let's imagine what happens if there's an increase in each of these. And I'd actually encourage you to pause and, and sketch out uh, these five scenarios, or at least think through your intuition about what's going to happen in each of these five scenarios. Uh, what, what will happen to harvest and population levels if there's an increase in price, an increase in costs, an increase in growth rate, an increase in carrying capacity, or an increase in efficiency, harvest efficiency. Okay, hopefully you, you paused and had a chance to sketch out your own thoughts. I'm gonna quickly go through uh, kind of the, the outcomes. So what if there's an increase in price? Well, an increase in price increases uh, the amplitude of the total uh, revenue curve, and that's going to make that curve steeper. Um, and so we're going to actually shift 
our optimal level of effort higher. So the point of tangency between the cost curve and the revenue curve is going to occur at a higher point than it would have otherwise. And though that's increasing that level of effort is going to uh, uh, reduce the population size, which makes sense. If, if it's more profitable, if you earn more money uh, uh, for fishing, you're going to want to increase the amount of fishing you do. Uh, things kind of work in the other direction if we increase costs. So I've now put the total revenue curve back. You can kind of see if I flip back between it, uh, this, this curve back here. Revenue, revenues go back down, but now I've increased costs. So I've increased the slope of this total cost curve. And now the point of tangency is going to move to a lower level of effort, shifting backwards along that curve. Uh, so we're going to increase in costs, increases the total cost curve, decreases the optimal level of effort, a decrease in the optimal level of effort decreases harvests. So uh, increasing costs, you fish less, uh, and it's going to increase the overall population size, less harvest, higher equilibrium population. Uh, if you increase R, well, in practice, you probably aren't going to increase R, but let's say you find out R is higher than you thought it was. Uh, if you increase R, now we're moving in the other direction. We're going to start at the population curve. Increasing in R is doesn't change the carrying capacity, but changes the peak of the sustainable yield curve, uh, which changes the peak of the effort yield curve, which makes the revenue and cost, the, the revenue curve go up exactly as if we increased profit, uh, increase the price. So uh, and we would then work backwards and then say, just like when we increase the price, uh, that's going to increase um, the optimal level of effort and thus increase the harvest and, uh, yeah, we'll work back to the sustainable yield curve. <clears throat> Things are very similar with an increase in carrying capacity. If we increase the carrying capacity, we're going to both shift the growth curve to a higher point uh, in terms of its uh, carrying capacity on the x-axis, but we're also going to increase the height of the peak, you know, increase the maximum sustainable yield. So that's going to increase the effort yield curve in both directions. It's going to increase uh, the revenue curve in both directions, and so it's going to increase uh, the optimal level of effort and thus increase the harvest. Now let's think about that efficiency. Uh, the efficiency doesn't change the growth curve, but it's going to change the effort yield curve. So for any level of effort, um, you're essentially, um, if you imagine that line, that describes a specific level of effort uh, in the fixed effort harvest. If I increase efficient, the efficiency, uh, I'm essentially increasing the slope of that line. Because remember, the slope of that line is the efficiency times the effort. So if I'm increasing the slope of that line, I'm essentially traversing the sustainable yield curve more quickly. And so I'm going to squeeze. I'm not going to change the height of this curve because the height of this curve is determined by the maximum sustainable yield. But I'm going to for a given level of effort, I'm going to move across that curve more quickly. So I'm kind of pinching that effort yield curve. Um, if I pinch that effort yield curve, I'm going to pinch <clears throat> uh, the total revenue curve because that's just uh, yield times price. And so I'm going to make that curve steeper and uh, hit the uh, I'm going to decrease the optimal level of effort. Uh, so if you are more efficient, you want to uh, essentially harvest less uh, to get the same, uh, essentially end up with the same amount of fish. Cool. So that's kind of the, the overview of the Gordon Schaefer model and uh, actually wraps up our overall unit on, on population modeling. Uh, and we'll pick up from here uh, 
next with a unit where we think not just about how uh, we model dynamic, how we, so we've been thinking about dynamic models in terms of time, how systems change uh, in time uh, as a function of their own state variables. We're next gonna move on to uh, spatiotemporal models, which are dynamic spatiotemporal models. So where, where things can change in space and in time uh, as a function of your current state of your system. Thanks, we'll pick up there next.